Who are the homeless? Let's meet them. 72-year-old Lester has been homeless about 10 years. We just got evicted from the house we're at because my girlfriend didn't pay the rent on time and um, she went her way and I went mine and that was a while ago. Before he was homeless, Aquan lived in foster care. When he became an adult, he aged out of the program with no place to live. Sleep um, by Jack Linden in Oakland, by the waters. Um, park benches hurt, <laughs> I'll tell you that. Sleeping in the car with my kids, you know, hearing gunshots at night in Oakland. That wasn't the life that I didn't, you know, I didn't want it no more. Some of the homeless live in cars, like this elderly lady. She did not want to give us her name for privacy reasons. This is the first time I've ever been homelessness and living in my car. Corinne, 57, has been homeless for 23 years. Well, uh, due to a drug addiction that I had in the past, uh, I got cleaned up and then I was able to rent a room from somebody and, uh, and then that person ended up losing the home due to the father dying, so I had to move. I got a hotel for a while and then it you know, got costly. I couldn't pay for it all the time. According to the February 2022 homeless census, there were 1,029 homeless people living in the Tri-City area. 160 lived in temporary homeless facilities and 866 unhoused people lived in the streets, parks, tents, cars, vans, campers, and in abandoned buildings. The elderly lady living in her car was terrified when she slept on the street alone. I didn't stay out there long. I was like a week. Yeah, I felt afraid because I would park different places where I thought was safe, but I, I didn't really sleep well because I didn't know what was going to happen. The homeless life is a hard life. You are cold and hungry. You never know when your meager possessions will be taken from you. Because, you know, a lot of us live in tents and you can feel every every piece of wind and, and, and just every coldness. My location was at the time in Oakland. It was pretty bad because, um, you know, I was walking to the store with my young daughter, with Aaliyah, and um, some some guys from, like, old neighborhoods and stuff like that um, pretty much pulled up on me with a gun in their hand, you know, while I had my daughter, you know. And that was... Pretty much for me, that was like the tip of the iceberg because, you know, it's one thing for me alone being, you know, in that position, but for, for me to be walking with my child and for that to happen, that was probably the hardest thing I'd ever had to deal with, honestly, just being homeless in the streets. Everything else, when it was just me personally, it was, it was a, a piece of cake. To my age, you know, um we got evicted when I was like in my 50s, so, or wait, no, 60s, and, and I'm 72 now, so nobody's hiring my old ass. <laughs> Can't leave my camp alone uh, in fear of it, you know, getting robbed and va vandalized and whatever knows else. So, I mean, who wants to be homeless anyway? I mean, realistically, you know, it's nothing fun about sleeping outside or having to steal just to eat, you know, that's, it, it's, it's too much, you know, it's too much of a risk. Cause you don't have no money, um, no place to go. Only 5% of the homeless were from out of state. 67%, two thirds, were residents of the Tri-City area at the time they lost their homes. In part two, of the Ohlone Tri-City News investigation into the unhoused, we will learn how some of the folks that we've talked with were able to move beyond homelessness through the intervention of local agencies. I am Charles Bolton for Ohlone Tri-City News.